Welcome back to another exciting episode of my epic coop build. In this episode, I'm going to be putting in the bird blocking, putting on the roof sheathing, and throwing the underlayment, the drip edge, and all the shingles. So stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody, to The Art of Doing. We seek to inspire you to practice doing new and different things, discover new passions, and explore new curiosities. This is the next installment of the Epic Coop build. You know we're going to be throwing on the roof. Let's get right into it. It's going to be wicked. You wouldn't be able to see from outside of the chicken coop angle because of the uh, fascia board would be in your way. So you're sitting inside the actual coop looking out. And let's get these bird block in. You know, I might do this a little differently. Okay, guys, so this is the backside bird's mouth and I realized putting this straight up and down is going to hit the roof anymore I slide it forward. If I slide it all the way back this roof will come down like this and we'll have a gap for critters to come up I don't know if you can see that, come up through here and hang out make a nest in this area. So I think what I'm going to do I'm going to lay this down flat like this and butt it right up against the fascia. That way they won't be able to come up and in and I should be able to still get the roof to sit on top of this. I don't know if you can see that. I'm kind of up on a ladder holding this because the angle from inside the coop won't do you much good to understand why I'm doing it this way. So now you're back inside the coop. I'm just going to get this just slanted enough for the roof to fit over it. I think I can just tack it down since it won't be standing up. Should be able to just tack it straight down. Let's see. Yeah, I like that. It should go even quicker than the last one. Such a snug fit. I don't even know if I need to tack it, but... I will. Love it. That one's a little too snug. I'm going to trim a little off. Just took about a saw blade width off. Okay, these are the moments of truth. This is a seven foot section. Because my overhang is one foot, so I can't do eight foot on center, otherwise the edge would hang in between a two foot on center stud. So if I measured this right, uh, yes. The seven foot section should fit right on the edge, fit right in between a stud over here, and it does. So let me start tacking this down in the corners, and then I'll tack it all in. And because I'm not professional, I'm going to draw a line for my rafters. go the long way. Do this first course and then go up, do the other courses. So now I have three sh full sheets of eight feet that should be able to lay on there without any measuring or cutting.
Okay, that was the last eight foot piece. The one foot piece to put on the extension. And the first course is finally done. Let me go measure and cut that. Also, I don't know if you guys noticed. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or if I bought the nails that are made out of jello, but I am going through nails and bending them like crazy. Let's keep going. Whew. Okay, now we'll repeat that with staggered joints so that I've got the one foot section here and the seven foot piece on the far end. I'm going to put the seven foot piece here and the one foot piece on the opposite so that the joints don't line up. It'll make the roof more sturdy and I guess it's better for preventing leaking, but I suppose if there's water in between the, the plywood, my roof has failed anyway. All right, let's get to it. I was hoping I was going to get this done before the rain started, but the rain just kicked up. So I'm going to pack it in for now, and uh, I'll continue when the rain stops. Okay, it's not raining today. Hopefully the weather holds up. Let me finish getting this uh, sheathing on, and then we'll start laying the underlayment and the shingles. Let's get to it. I'm going to load up all the rest of the wood for this last course, so I'm going to have to keep on climbing up and down the ladder. This run is short enough, I don't need to mark out the studs. I can see them from the other line. These are all the nails that I wasted. Pretty bad. The, uh, the new brand is a lot better. Before I install the drip edge, I'm just gonna throw a line of paint on the space board so that I have some paint underneath the drip edge and the actual wet is protected. Nothing special, just some white exterior paint. Okay, on this side, we're coming just to the edge because the slant side will overlap this. And I'm gonna use one inch uh, galvanized screw. leave about one pinky gap between the drip edge and the fascia. It'll be easier to measure than uh, actually measuring. Okay, so this whole length is 32 feet. These are coming in 10 foot sections. So I'm expecting this to be a two foot section, but I'm gonna measure it to see if you Beautiful. And I'll cut this last piece, and then I can start doing the underlayment. We'll be tacking this up with these um, plastic washer. They're they're made. Uh, it's one inch uh, galvanized nail. It's made for this underlayment. Um, it grips it down a little bit better. We're going to go every foot or so along the edges and every two feet on the inside. I'll go tack up that far corner and then uh, work my way back. I'm already having a good time fighting this. Whew. It's getting warm. I'm going to have to take off the sweatshirt. So tar paper lines up with the drip edge, flush with the drip edge, and flush with the eave end. I'll cut this off. We'll start with the second course, and I'll bring you guys up on the roof so you can see the progress. So I don't know how much got recorded, because I missed that whole bit, but 
this tar paper is going to overlap the first course by uh, four to six inches. I only nail about halfway up because the next course is going to overlay here and I'll throw a nail here. Oh, I just didn't film that whole course. Working on the roof is not a good time. It's about the hardest work I've done on this coop build so far. So, I'm kind of hanging off the top of this roof here. I finished, just about finished the second course. I had to build a jig, kind of like a portable roof ladder to support my weight because I was slipping and sliding off the uh, tar paper the whole time. You'll see it come into frame in a second when I move it. Okay, all I just have to do is nail down the last course. Okay, next step is to add the drip edge on these rake ends. I'm just gonna get rid of this edge of tar paper right flush with the fascia. We'll start with the drip edge on the bottom side. Work our way up. We'll overlap any drip edge, maybe four to six inches. And I've got a little um, roofing mastic. I'll put a uh, circular bead inside that overlap to keep any water from backing up. And once those are done on both rake edges, then I can start putting on the roofing shingles. Okay, so this is gonna go on similar to the, to the eave edge. It's gonna overlap the eave edge and it's going over top the tar paper. Line that up. I'm still gonna use my handy, no pun intended, pinky guide to space it off the to space it off the rake a little bit. Okay, so this is a starter strip. Got a line of tar, and they come pre-scored. So you split them in half, and they have two starter strips. So, say this is my, my eave edge here. A normal, a normal set of shingles would sit here and nothing would be gluing this shingle to the course beneath it. And then the next set of shingles would be up here and this would be protected, but this one would be able to flop. So by putting the tar strip, the starter strip down, nailing this down here and this tar will stick this shingle together. Also in certain shingles that have the slice in them, these are architectural shingles, they have a nice 3D look. Um, but sometimes a nail might be showing if you just start a course of this. You could see the nail in between the, uh, the slit of the three slit tiles. But uh, I'm trying to do this the right way. Like I said, this is my first time, so I'm trying everything out. So we're gonna do a line of starter strips along the eave and then up the gable. We don't need, I'm sorry, up the rake. We don't need one on the gable end because there's a drip edge is nailed down along that whole top line. So let's get these bad boys installed. Couldn't get a great angle on it. So I'll hand hold it. So we got four nails on each. The tar strip is just above the drip edge. A nail is just up on the wood. We're gonna do about a three quarter of an inch overhang over the drip edge 
on both sides. And I've got about a three inch overlap on the rake end um, starter strip. So I laid out some starter strips down the roof. Let's get these all done on the eave side, and then we'll go up the gable ends. All right, I'm going to finish all the way the rest up the uh, the rake end, and I'm going to start on this side doing the courses of shingles because I had to cut a partial here. You don't uh, same with the sheathing on the roof. You don't want to have a seam above a seam with courses of um, shingles. So because I ha I cut about a eight inch piece right here, if I start a course of shingles this way, all of my seams won't overlap. I'll be right back. Okay, so here are the shingles. First course is going to marry exactly over the starter strips on both edges and is a full course. In other words, I'm not cutting any of it off. Now, I don't know if you can see these white stripe lines. This manufacturer of shingles has a sweet spot for nailing. This is where you nail every course. They want six nails, and I'm going to try to catch the starter strip, the top of the starter strip, with the nail. So I'm going to hedge down to the lower part of this um, sweet spot nail zone, at least for this first row. Okay, now, second course sits on top of this one and lines up right on top of that nail edge, right, to hide all those nails. Still going to go flush to the starter strip on the outside, but since we don't want overlapping edges, Manufacturer wants me to take six inches off the next course. And since I'm a novice at it, I'm going to measure it. Now you can see the two white lines for the nailing zone are just going to catch the top of the first course. So everywhere gets a, um, a nail to hold it down and this bottom edge, which won't have a nail down here, is going to get glued down by the tar and the starter strip. And because I can't hit a nail way out to the edge because the drip edge is there and it's hanging out um, three quarters of an inch, that's what this start a strip going up the, the um, rake edge is for to stop blow offs on the outside edge. And we can save these remnant ends for the far side of the course. Okay, so the next course is going to be a full course. I'm going to run these all the way down the roof for these four courses and then we'll repeat. Okay, so when we come to the end, there's gonna be some partial pieces that we have to make fit. So I'm gonna make a couple of cuts here. five courses I did f figure out that whatever side you start and lay out the uh, the courses from and keep that factory edge on that outside that'll be the prettiest 
So this edge I have to cut off a little bit of a little bit of edges. It's not going to be quite as pretty as down there. So I'm going to start these next four or five courses here. And I think since I have these five courses nailed down, I should be safer to hang out up on the roof and not have to move the ladder up and down every time. So let me load up a bunch of tiles up onto the roof and then I'll start the next five courses. Okay, hopefully these are the last few courses I need to do. I figured I'd give you a close-up. So this course has the full sheet. The next course has the sheet with six inches cut off of it. I'll line it up with the edge. And nail it down. Okay, these are the last few courses. And I'm just curious how they're gonna line up before I cut. Okay, so that's about perfect. That means that the last nailing edge it's just about at the peak, which is great because, let's see, that's gonna go there, that's there. What I'll do, I was afraid I was going to have to do a whole extra course. I'll just pull this one down just enough to nail the, the uh, nail zone in. And then the flashing will go over that and make that last seal. Yeah, that's going to look nice. Okay, good deal. Let me cut off the uh, 6, 11, and 17. In these last couple of courses, one, two, three, four, perfect. So we'll do a full course, six inch off, an 11 inch off, and a 17 inch off, and we'll run these four stripes down. Be right back. So again, this is the edge of the roof. My flashing isn't gonna be long enough to cover up these nail stripes. So I'm going to do one more course, but it's not going to be all the way up where it would normally sit. I'm going to bring it down just enough where I can nail it down. I think that is perfect. Let's see. I think I'm going to bring the flashing up here and make sure this is going to get covered by the flashing. To see how high I need to nail this course. Yeah, be right back. Okay, everybody, it's time to lay down the gable end drip edge. But before I do, if any of this has given you value, if you like how the progress is going so far, please give me a thumbs up, share this with your friends, and if you haven't, subscribe to the channel. Now let's get to it. Now, here's the fun part. I made a big mistake here. Remember as I was lining up this last edge, and I used a small piece of shingle 
to keep that depth above this course. Well, my previous courses must have drifted a little bit because by the time I get down here, I've got too big of a gap for my drip edge to cover. Now what I should have done is measured on the side that I started on and come down and measured on this side. What I really could have done was laid chalk lines every so often up the rake ends so I could make sure that I was running parallel to them. But I thought I could get away with just carefully butting it up to the shingle um, line before. I wanted to skip that step and save some time and it has cost me in the end. Maybe not as much time as I saved by not snapping all these lines. It's a pain crawling up on this on this roof. But what I did was I bought some six inch flashing. I'm gonna tack it down here. It'll cover the nailing zone. I'll use a mastic and at least two rows of nails and then I'll put the drip edge over that. Might even be a better seal than I than I was um, planning to begin with. But let's get that started. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I know you see me wearing gloves anytime I do work, but this metal flashing and the metal drip edge is extremely sharp. You really need to wear gloves when you're handling this stuff. Plus the mastic gets all over you, so it's another good reason to wear them. The question for you today is, what color do you think I should paint the outside of the coop? We finished off the roof, so stick around for the next episode where we put the sheathing on the outside of the coop, predator-proof the run, button this bad boy up. Thanks for sticking with me. Let's always remember to practice compassion. Let's practice kindness and practice humility. And thank you for helping me up on this roof to practice the art of doing it. Click the subscribe up there. Some good videos to watch over here. Thanks everybody.